controversial nominees to be quickly confirmed. Not so much anymore. For more on this, Scott Jennings, former special assistant to President Bush and a former political advisor to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Also, Julian Epstein, former chief counsel for the House Judiciary Committee and former staff director for the House Government Reform Committee. Thank you both for joining us on this very busy day. Mm -hmm. Good so let's go through some of this. Scott, I'll start with you. Public protest against the ban, delaying cabinet positions, already successful with that, saying that they will reject President Trump's uh, Supreme Court pick before they even know who it will be. Is this a wise move by Democrats? I don't think it's a wise political move because the voters spoke loud and clear on Election Day. They gave Republicans unified control of government because they're tired of gridlock in Washington, D.C. Over the last eight years, we've seen very little movement in Washington. People feel like the policy discussion in this country is ground to a halt. They want President Trump to be able to build a government, and they want to see change, and they want to see an end to the status quo in Washington. But that's exactly what we're getting from the Democrats. They're out there protesting every day. It must be exhausting to wake up every day with the outrage of the day on your mind and on your agenda. We need cooperation in Washington, D.C., because that's what the people voted for in this last election by giving Republicans so much control of government, not just in Washington, but at state capitals as well. We see it up and down uh, the levels of government in this country. There is a desire for cooperation, unity, and moving forward, and we're not getting it and, out and of the Democrats. Julian, is it in the best interest of the country? Because at the very bottom line, the basic um, being a lawmaker for this country, isn't that what you're supposed to consider first? Well, of course, and I think Scott's talking points would have been great on November 9th. I don't think they're that relevant on January 31st. The, he seems to be missing the point that there is, rather than consolidating power, which every new president does, this president is shrinking his political base. This immigration ban, which all Republicans now, most Republicans are saying, was just completely bungled, is evidence of a White House that's completely disorganized, completely in disarray. The political leadership of the Congress wasn't consulted. Trump's own cabinet wasn't consulted on it. And so the backlash that you're seeing is not just coming from Democrats, it's coming from Republicans on the Hill. People like the Koch brothers, the Murdoch sons are all critical of this ban. Everybody seems to be saying the same thing, that this is a White House in disarray, this is a White House that's disorganized, this is a White House that doesn't know how to vet important decisions, this is a White House that doesn't know how to get it right. You look at what Trump said last week, he wants to make Mexico pay for the wall. And they put out in a very haphazard and kind of incompetent way this idea that Mexico will pay through it through a tariff. That's not a. Mm -hmm. pay, that's not Mexico paying for it. That's the American you know, hardworking taxpayers. Julian, if we can go back to what you were just referencing in terms of the immigration uh, policy, the new executive order that the president signed, I was sure. listening to what you were saying there, and you're talking about a lot of lawmakers. But we had a um, poll that we actually just talked about this morning. It was a Rasmussen poll where 52 percent, I believe, no, 57 percent of American people support the ban. So does that make? Is that I, supposed to make I a difference? I don't support subscribe to the Rasmussen poll because I don't think the questions were asked that well. If you look at, and I think that, and, I, and, and other polling data I've seen are saying exactly the opposite, and if you look at what the political leadership is saying in the Congress, the, the Speaker and the major, Senate Majority Leader, both Republicans, are saying they weren't consulted. The leader of the Foreign Relations Committee wasn't consulted. President's, the President's own, uh, own cabinet, All right, Scott, Tillerson, Kelly, yeah. Mattis, Scott, are all I saying they weren't Scott, I want to let you to get in, get in just, just one final word here because we are short sure, on time. Listen, just it, one it, final it, word. Yeah, it's amazing to hear Democrats complain about a government in disarray. At the same time, they're sitting there obstructing Donald Trump from building his government. We see what the Democrats are doing in Washington today, not letting confirmations go through. The man has to be allowed to build a government to improve implementation, to improve communication, and then we'll see progress in Washington, D.C. Regarding the politics of this, the polling mm -hmm. is clear. The polling is clear. If you drive outside of Washington or outside of New York City, people want this. People want this. They support what Trump is doing on this. And not the first the time bubble. we've get heard about extreme bubble. vetting from him. It is a promise that he made and a promise that he's kept uh, then, from then his then campaign. Why aren't any Republicans? Why aren't any Republicans coming to his defense? Well, Paul Over Ryan did today, Republicans just a short are time sitting ago. On their hands. Over 200 Republicans are sitting on their hands in the Congress. 35 Republicans are opposing this, and, this, and their leadership in the Senate, the Republican leadership in the Senate, are all saying this was improperly vetted and a bad well, idea. We'll see what else Get they have to say straight. today. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, another busy day. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. Well, dozens of diplomats making a statement of dissent opposing President.